Okay, we are going to do uh, some, maybe one complete video, it might be some uh, joined together videos, just depends. So we are going to do a reverse look at cause and effect <laughs> and uh, came into the workshop today, not particularly chilly, but I thought I'd pop the uh, little fan heater on and as soon as I popped it on uh, some of the electrics uh, blew and uh, had a quick look over at the it's an Alexa controlled plug there that I just speak to Alexa and turn it to um, tell it to turn the heating on or off and uh, that was dead as well so I knew that that circuit had uh, been tripped for some reason uh, the wiring in here is a little bit unusual we've got uh, two consumer units uh, what well, one consumer unit and, and another RCD protected circuit. So if we come over to here, you won't be able to see it I don't think, but there is a set of RCD protected and fused sockets there and then another set of extension sockets plug into that. And uh, what I noticed was that uh, all the flight sim uh, computers and everything had gone off and uh, this orange cable uh, it's, it's the only cable I had at the time it's got that three socket RCD and fuse protected bit on it that uh, I just showed you but it connects uh, to basically this was in two halves and it's connected with usual 16 amp caravan style uh, plug and socket arrangement and uh, <laughs> there was a faint whiff of burning and uh, if we have a look here you can see that is the live pin completely melted there you can see all the damage in there that's the other side and uh, again, live wire. Oops, if I get it right. Live wire all melted there. And then we've got that. So I'm thinking, well, how the hell has that happened? This has been fitted in the workshop for many years and uh, rated at 16 amp. Um, it's a bit of an unusual failure. And then I remembered that a couple of days ago, I hadn't turned the heater off uh, by mistake and unfortunately the little dial thermostat on the top had been knocked and it was quite high. So when I got in in the morning the temperature in here was 32 degrees <laughs> so this had been running continuously all night. Now I'm not sure what this is rated at on its full temperature. So it's 2000 uh, watts. So uh, a 16 amp uh, circuit um, protected by a 13 amp fuse is more than capable of uh, running that. But I just wonder if it was getting very close. Maybe there was a... I, I, I don't know. Uh, I just don't see why there would be any sort of connection issue in this. But something's happened there to cause that to seriously overheat. Um, anyway, when I touched this, even though everything had gone off, this was really, really hot. The whole lot, I burnt myself on one of the screws that holds these covers on. Uh, you can see it there. I should accidentally touch that and got burnt slightly. So this was absolutely cooking. Um, and when I got in this morning, uh, the fan hadn't been on. So there was an overload already happening on this. And... Uh, Turning that fan on just overloaded it completely and uh, took out the, uh, was it, I think the RCD and the fuse was tripped. So something was overloading that. Now, the only thing that I've got connecting to it is all the flight sim stuff. And uh, I basically had to pull all this out, get to that set of... Uh, sockets at the back and I just unplugged everything and then started to plug everything back in to the socket after 
removing that and connecting the wiring, the orange wire, straight back into the actual fuse unit. I'll try and get a better view of it, but there is it. I can't even see the bloody thing. Yeah, it's all stuff down here behind this unit, but it doesn't really matter. Anyway, eventually I started plugging things in one by one and all was good. Uh, and then I plugged the two PCs back in that uh, run the flight simulator. Now this is the expensive one with the expensive graphics card in it and uh, that is the one I run the air traffic control uh, on and one of the touchscreen monitors as well. So I thought, okay, well, the power supply has failed, something odd has happened. But when I touched the top, it was all wet. And I thought, oh no, well, there's something definitely wrong there. So I looked up into the roof. This is a wooden workshop with a uh, felt roof. And there was just a little bit of moisture. Not much, it wasn't like it was dripping off. But I, when I ran my hands around here, in fact, I think it was probably the other side, just up in here, tiniest bit of moisture. In fact, there still is now. And if you look from there, straight down where this computer was, it's the roof's leaked, fallen onto the computer, and has done something to it, what is drawing a lot of current. Uh, hence the heat, the burning, plastic. I, uh, I'm drying this out and then I'll get it apart and have a, a closer look. And uh, I only did the felt on this workshop a few years ago. Run you around. So this is only a year or two old and uh, the weak spot with all these things is these little clout nails that hold it. There you can see some there. So what I do when I do the felt, I will use some of the bitumastic paint and just go over all of the nail heads. Uh, so what I've had to do, I've had to go and find an old tin of bitumastic paint from the shed, which was pretty much dried out, uh, almost into a sort of putty consistency. And I have just applied it to all of the nails. There's no tears or damage not even in the ridge uh, of the felt. Uh, I think I'm going to order another fresh tin and go over the rest, but somewhere in this area, water has crept underneath the clout nail, or the roofing felt nail, and has just slowly made its way down the joist until it finds somewhere where gravity takes over, and it just drips, uh, drips down. So, yeah, an interesting chain of events which could have caused, well, could have been devastating fire, I suppose. But uh, I have a smoke alarm in here that is linked to uh, all the other ones in the house. But uh, by that stage, and by the time you've worked out which alarm is going off, it uh, might have been too late. So, yeah, I just thought that was an interesting cause and effect, although I've reversed it back for you. We're all good now. So, uh, you know, that was generating some heat. Uh, some current was passing through that to do that level of uh, damage, and probably for quite some time. We have had quite a bit of rain over the last few days, so I suspect that's been overheating for uh, possibly a few days. But you can see how it has molten there and it's bubbled up. Yeah, didn't uh, didn't expect that at all. So there you go, another reason to have fully working smoke detectors, and uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> catch you later.